Hello, Cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first visit to our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. We are really happy you could join us. If you're not already a subscriber to our channel, click that subscribe button below me and then click the bell and select how often you want to be notified of new videos on our channel. And please feel free to leave a comment. I read them all and I do my best to answer each one, especially if there is a question. So what do you think is a budget meal? I ask because this week on the Seven Network during the news, they're running a series of budget recipes. And the topic has come up in Cheapskates Chatter. Cheapskates Chatter is our Facebook group. There's a link to it below me in the description box. If you haven't joined us, we'd love to have you join us there too. Now, the first recipe segment meal idea was budget gourmet slow cooked lamb with a side of, and I just know I am going to butcher the pronunciation, so please forgive me. Harkas Parmetia. It was to serve four for the low, low budget friendly price of just $30. Now I know I had to look up what the Harkas Parmetia, sorry people, was. I had no idea. Now it turns out it's the French name for a rather fancy type of cottage pie. Now, for us, traditionally, cottage pie is made from leftover beef, not lamb. Um, and you know what? $30 for a cottage or a shepherd's pie, doesn't matter what you call it, that's not budget friendly. <laughs> so it had me thinking, what makes a budget friendly meal? Well, our monthly grocery budget is $320 has been for a while and this is a tight year so I'm sticking there's no wriggle room I have to stick to that budget that includes our food the toiletries if we buy them cleaning supplies and yes even with the inflated prices of 2022 it is still doable now it takes a little more effort takes a little more thought a little more planning but it's doable To help stick with our budget, I allow $5 per meal, not per serve, per meal for the meat, the poultry, the fish portion of our dinners. And it's actually been that much, $5 per meal, since about 2011. Now, of course, that's averaged over the seven dinners we have in a week. And it is doable. It really is doable. Now, to me, a budget meal is a dinner that fits within your grocery budget. It's a meal that uses the basic pantry ingredients that you have on hand. And that's bearing in mind that your basic ingredients may well be different to mine simply because we live in different places, we cook different meals, we eat different foods in a different style well it's all potentially obviously but you know what I mean make it fit within your budget and when you find a recipe that doesn't use your basic ingredients the ingredients that you have in your pantry an ingredient the recipe that has something that is going to increase your weekly grocery shop then that's not a budget friendly regardless of what the TV may tell you, meal. It's just not. Now, for example, the meal the news was talking about cost $30 for four people or $7.50 per serve. Now, if that's a restaurant meal, that's pretty cheap. But for a home-cooked meal, no, that's not cheap. It's not budget-friendly. A good example of a budget meal is a roast, be it lamb or beef, pork if you eat it. On the surface, a roast can look expensive. 
but it doesn't have to be. It can be a very, very budget-friendly meal if you handle it the right way. Now, of course, the first night is the roast dinner with the veggies and the gravy, and it's all delicious. So you get your roast out of the oven, you let it sit for a few minutes, let it rest, and then you slice it all up and you serve. Remembering your portion control. Portion control is essential to keeping your grocery budget under control. Just because there's meat left on the carving tray doesn't mean you need to dish it up. So while you're carving and dishing up, and you've got the gravy made, pack up another meal of the meat in the gravy and freeze it. You now have an instant roast dinner for another night, or at least a faster roast dinner. The meat and gravy can be out of the freezer and thawing and heating in the microwave while the vegetables roast. Two, so from one roast, one piece of roast meat, you're getting two roast dinners. Next, after you've enjoyed your dinner, come out to the kitchen, take the leftovers, the scraps, the, the little bits off the carving tray, take the bits out of the baking dish and freeze them. They can be used for a curry. They can be used to make um, fried rice. They can be used to make um, burritos. They can be added to soup, turned into pies or a cottage pie or a shepherd's pie. Or, or our absolute favourite for leftover lamb scraps is French shepherd's pie. We love it and I love it because it's one of those one pan dinners. So from one piece of roast meat, that's three meals. That piece of roast meat, that roast is looking better and better as an economical cut of meat. Next thing you do, take the bone and add it to the slow cooker or the stock pot. If there's no bone, there will be scrapings still. Take those and add them to the slow cooker or the stock pot. Toss in the veggie peelings you've saved in the freezer from the week add water and let it simmer at least overnight in the slow cooker, three to four hours on the stove to make the most beautiful, rich, flavorful stock. This stock can be used as the base of a soup after you strain it. The bones and the peelings, the scraps, well, they can go into the compost nothing's wasted everything is used if you compost in place dig a deeper hole bury it in the garden so that's four meals from one roast each meal should serve four the soup will probably serve six or eight depends on how much water you put in and that makes that $30 leg of lamb or piece of beef a budget friendly buy You'll get 16 serves from it. And that makes each serve $1.87. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, well, $1.87 times four, well, that's more than $5, Kath. You've, you've blown your, your, your meat budget. Well, you're right. But that's my average $5. I average it over the week. And that $5 per um meal is done by choosing cheaper meals for the rest of the week so remember it's an average price it comes down when we have chicken fish mince sausages vegetarian dishes for the remainder of the week now right now second week in a row chicken is 6.99 chicken fillets a stick 6.99 per kilo at the butcher now i use roughly 500 grams of chicken per meal for the four of us so the meat portion or the meat you know poultry portion of a chicken meal costs three dollars fifty i've been able to get mince for nine dollars a kilo i use 250 grams of mince per meal that costs $2.25. Now, I know that sounds like a tiny, tiny amount of meat for four people, and it is on its own, but I bulk it out. 
I bulk it out with TVP and TVP costs 19 cents per cup. One cup of TVP rehydrated is the equivalent of 500 grams of mints. So that effectively gives me a meat portion for a recipe of 750 grams. Now, if you add the 19 cents for the cost of that TVP to the $2.25, the meat portion of a meal like that costs $2.44. Now, that's um, 50, 61 cents per portion. That's budget friendly. That's what helps bring the average meat cost per meal down to my $5. It makes meat affordable when you plan how you are going to use it. Now, of course, we're just talking about meat there, but you also need to consider the sides for a budget-friendly meal because sides can be expensive too. Adding vegetables to uh, meals can increase the cost drastically if you're not smart about what veggies you put in your trolley. Buy in season. Now, look, people have been screaming about the cost of lettuce. Well, you know, in the southern states, it's winter, guys. Southern states, lettuce is out of season. If you want lettuce in the southern states of Australia, you are going to have to pay more for it simply because, and we're going to ignore this year's floods that, boosted the price to $12, it has to come from North Queensland. The lettuce has to travel thousands of kilometres to get to you, so it is going to cost more. If you want lettuce and you live in the southern states of Australia and you want it in winter, grow your own. Ditto for tomatoes, cucumbers, anything else that's out of season, strawberries, for example. They're out of season in the southern states. They're coming into season, but right now they're still out. Buy what's in season or grow your own. When you go to the green grocer or the supermarket, look at what is in season in your area and that's what you're going to buy. If fresh broccoli is $7.99 a kilo, buy the frozen for $5 a kilo. It's just as valuable um, nutrition-wise and it's easier to store in the freezer. You don't have to worry about using it all up before it goes yellow if you put it in the fridge. Same with the cauliflower. Cauliflowers are $5 each. Buy a bag of cauliflower for $3.50 and keep it in your freezer. Corn, peas, beans. Beans, $50 a kilo for fresh beans. Buy frozen beans. The vegetable, frozen vegetables are cheap. But they're still good for you. And of course, if you're really, really serious about eating vegetables and fresh veggies and keeping your grocery budget real and low, then you aren't going to just have to bite the bullet and grow your own. It just makes sense. It's not difficult to grow the food that you eat and you don't need a lot of space. And lastly, for a budget meal, if the recipes that you're looking at use herbs and spices that you don't normally have, find a substitute. There's substitute, substitute lists on our website. Um, if a recipe calls for fresh herbs, you can use dried. You don't need to use fresh. A general rule of thumb to keep in mind is... Um, Dried herbs are more potent and concentrated than fresh herbs, so you use less for the same flavour impact. So that means that the correct ratio is one tablespoon of fresh herbs to one teaspoon of dried herbs. So if you've got a tablespoon of fresh parsley, you use a teaspoon of dried parsley. If you want to put that on a sticky note and stick it inside the pantry door so that you can look at it if you need to, do it. You won't forget. Budget meals are simply meals that fit within your grocery budget. They're meals that don't use anything you don't normally buy, that have no waste and that you will eat. 
budget meals use ingredients because ingredients give you options. Now, before I go, thank you for watching right to the end. If you've made it this far, I'd love to know if you have. So if you could um, leave a comment in the comment section and start it with budget meals so that I know you've watched right to the end, that would be great. And I'm asking you to do this because I'm. it helps me with planning so that I know which videos get people get all the way through, how many people get all the way through, how you respond to them, so that I can plan videos that you actually want to watch, that are useful to you. And the other thing I would ask you to do is share our video. There's a share button. If you know someone who might like this video, click the link, it sends, click the button, it sends them a link. That's all it does. And don't forget the thumbs up. I keep saying oh, one more thing, but this is really important. Thumbs up. Look, these things help our channel to grow and to be recognized more easily because there are millions of YouTube channels out there. I want people to be, I want to ask, I want people to be able to find us easily. And the easier it is to find us, the easier it is to spread the message that it is not only okay to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing, but it can still be done even in today's crazy world. And that's something that we all need to know. Happy cheap skating, everyone. I'll be back soon with another video.